I have always thought that I'm either going to have a really hard time getting pregnant or there's a chance that I may never get pregnant. Wow, I did not think I was gonna cry in this video. Hey guys, so today I'm gonna to talk to you about how I got pregnant without a period. And this is not clickbait, this is 100% true. And I still cannot believe that I am pregnant. Um, while I'm filming this, I am 20 weeks. And I just cannot believe that I'm pregnant because I have had extremely irregular periods to the point where it's been normal for me to have like one to two periods a year. And a lot of the time those periods would only last like two or three days and be super light, like barely even counting as a period. And what we're always taught is that you need a period to ovulate and you need to ovulate to get pregnant. So I have always thought that I'm either going to have a really hard time getting pregnant or there's a chance that I may never get pregnant. But my story does not start with me. It actually starts with my mother. My mom tried for six years to get pregnant with me and then she tried for another seven years before she got pregnant with my brother. And I cannot even imagine trying for that long and struggling with infertility for that long before being able to finally have a baby. And the saddest part was is that my mom's dream had always been to be a mom. That was like the number one thing that she wanted for her life. And then it just was not happening for her. And she learned that the reason it wasn't happening for her is because she has something called PCOS polycystic ovary syndrome. Polycystic ovary syndrome is a hormonal condition and it can affect your ability to reproduce and to ovulate and unfortunately it is a chronic condition so there is no cure for it. So I'm going to read off a few of the common symptoms for you guys. Heavy, long, intermittent, unpredictable or absent periods, infertility, acne or oily skin, excessive hair on the face or body, and weight gain, especially around the belly. It's also very common for women with PCOS to have lots of small cysts on their ovaries. And I have actually been hospitalized twice with ovarian cysts. And my periods have been even more irregular than my mom's. So because my mom has PCOS, I really thought that I also have PCOS because a lot of the PCOS symptoms that she's had, I've had the same or even worse. And also it's really common for PCOS to run in families. Because I assumed from a young age that my mom's story was also going to be my story, I kind of made peace with it in a way where I thought, okay, well, if I don't get pregnant, I am totally fine with adopting. I love the idea of adopting. Uh, I was open with my husband from the time that we were dating, told him, hey, there's a chance that I may struggle to conceive. And he was totally relaxed about it. He just had this incredible peace that if it was God's will, that it would happen for us. And if it wasn't, then we would make the best of it. And so he just accepted me as I was. But even though I was expecting it to be difficult, to conceive, I continued to pray and I would ask God for the grace to make it easy for us to conceive when we started trying for a kid and that if it wasn't his will that he'd help me and my husband to find peace in the unknown and for him to show us what the next steps were uh, and if he even wanted us to be parents. It was kind of a case of hoping for the best but expecting the worst. So when my husband and I got married, the first birth control that I did was I got the progesterone only injection. And I kind of just did that because it was an easy way to not have to think about remembering to take birth control. I could just kind of get the shot and then think about it again when it was time to get the shot again. But when I got that shot, I started wondering if it would make it even more difficult for me to get pregnant because not only do I have PCOS messing with my hormones, but now I am putting hormonal birth control into my body. And I know people say progesterone only is not like a super hormonal birth control, but you're still putting something into your body. And so that was 
a little bit of a question mark for me. And so eventually I spoke with my husband and I decided that I wanted to get off of it. And after I got off of it, I did not have a period for an entire year. And I thought, oh my goodness, <laughs> what have I done? I spoke to my doctor and she said that that's completely normal. Sometimes it takes a while for periods to come back. Also, mind you, even when I was a teenager, I had spoken to my doctors twice about my irregular periods. And they always said to me, oh, it's not a big deal. As long as you are getting a period, like once or twice a year, it shows that your body still knows how to make a period, which didn't really sit right with me because... I was like, surely you should test me to see if I actually have PCOS because it runs in my family. And yeah, I don't know why they never tested me for it um, and why they weren't concerned. I don't fully get it. But then once I got off of that, my husband and I decided to use a more natural form of birth control that was not hormonal. You can kind of assume what that was. And around that time of switching to non-hormonal birth control, my husband and I kind of talked about having kids and we felt like we wanted to have kids in the near future, but we weren't 100% ready for kids yet. So we decided that we were going to leave the door a little bit open and that we were only gonna be using protection like 70 to 80% of the time. And in our minds, that was kind of us leaving the door a little bit open for the waiting period of being able to conceive to maybe be a little bit sped up in case it was going to take us the same amount of time it took my parents which was like six and seven years so we definitely were not trying but we also were not so afraid and against getting pregnant that we wanted to keep the door 100 percent closed but because we were not being a hundred percent careful i was taking pregnancy tests a lot Every single time I would be like, oh, I've had a headache like twice this week. Maybe I should take a pregnancy test. Or whenever I just sent st something even slightly different in my body, I was feeling a little bit more bloated than usual. Uh, I was getting a little bit more acne than usual, feeling a little bit more tired, anything like that, I would just take a pregnancy test. But every single time I took it, it was a negative. And I, I would feel a little bit disappointed but I would just think, okay, well, this is what I have been expecting. I have been expecting that I'm probably not gonna get pregnant. Also, I wasn't tracking my ovulation or anything or trying like that. I was pretty sure that I wasn't even ovulating because I wasn't getting periods. So I was just like, uh, well, I guess I'll just keep taking them when I feel something off in my body. And then one day I took the pregnancy test. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> wow, I did not think I was gonna cry in this video. Then one day I took the pregnancy test and just because I was feeling a little bit bloated and I'd been feeling tired and I was fully not expecting it to be positive. I was completely speechless. The video is on my channel, so if you've watched that, you know I was speechless. <laughs> to be honest, I would have been more speechless, but because the camera was there, I. <laughs> I felt like, okay, I need to say something. I was just in complete shock. I have never had an experience that felt like such an outer body experience as I did in that moment. I just remember looking at my hand that was holding the pregnancy test and thinking that is not my hand and that is not my pregnancy test because I couldn't believe that my body, that couldn't even produce periods, was able to produce a child. And even though we weren't 100% ready and we weren't trying, I was so happy and so overwhelmed by the miracle of God that he can take someone who doesn't even get periods, who's had cysts on their ovaries, who I'm sure I still do have PCOS, and he can create a child in their womb. And the month that we conceived, I had my last period two and a half months before then. So try to get a doctor to explain that. <laughs> I wish that this video was me giving you guys a step-by-step -step guide on how to get pregnant if you don't have a period or how to get pregnant if you have PCOS or another hormonal condition that makes it difficult to conceive. But unfortunately, 
I don't know. But all I can say is that God is so good. And his timeline is not our timeline. And science and doctors and fertility experts, they can tell us all these different things, give us all the stats and the info from all of the research that they've done. And it can be helpful. But God created our bodies. He created the female body. He created the male body. And he creates every single baby in our womb. And he doesn't have to make us ovulate on time. He doesn't have to make our periods come on time. As long as we surrender to him and trust that his plan and his timing is perfect for every single person, we can't lose. I look at couples like Bella and Dallin. They're a YouTube couple and they str have struggled for so long to conceive. And now they've adopted this little girl and it's so beautiful watching their family and I can just tell they were always supposed to adopt this little girl. She was always supposed to be their daughter and I know that in the thick of their infertility that was not what was going through their head that maybe God has the perfect adopted child out there for us. They were just thinking like why can't we conceive? And God's ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and we do not know his plan but it's so true what people say hindsight is 2020 and when you look back you can always see what god has done anyways thank you so much for watching this video and listening to my testimony i hope that it encouraged you guys i hope that it gave you hope and i wish you all of the best in whatever chapter of life you're in right now whether you're a parent wanting to be a parent or if you just clicked on this video because you were curious I am so grateful that you guys chose to click on this video and connect with me and I hope that you subscribe and I will see you guys next week. Bye!